This person has played drums for just about everybody in the business, and I'm so honored and humbled to have him in the studio with me for a concert experience. We're talking to Kenny Aronoff next. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. The song is so good. Give me how old that song is now. <clears throat> Looking back on it, you well, guys. You, you heard it when you were in diapers. Uh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. Well, I wasn't wearing diapers. I was wearing safety pins back then. It was, you know, that time period. Yep. You guys, welcome to the concert experience. I am your host, James Live Jr. That's a little John Mellencamp, of course. Some of you guys knew him as John Cougar when he first started. And there's John Cougar Mellencamp, and now John Mellencamp. I love the the, the progression of him. Um, but I'm playing him because this guy actually. Played on like what, ten albums with them. You were with them for a long time. Yeah, yeah, you did a lot with them a long 17 time. Seventeen years. Yeah, seventeen years. That's somebody's lifetime. Yeah, crazy. So yeah, he. So we're playing this song because I love this song of his and many more. This guy has a new book out. It's really good with some great pictures and everything. It's called Sex, Drums, and Rock and Roll. I love that title. The hardest hitting man in show business. It's so good, you guys. You have to run out and get it. He's great. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna delve into who he's played with, what's going on, some things behind him. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Aronoff. All right, man. How are Thank you, sir? Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. My Perfect. pleasure. What, what an honor. Um, now, with that song, you said you have a story about that song. ROCK in USA. Well, was first a big of all, hit. John, John didn't, wasn't into that song. He didn't like it. It was too commercial. He was Very trying commercial. to get more... He was getting more serious. So he, that was the only song I ever recorded where he wasn't in the studio. You hear me goofing around on the cowbell yeah. at the beginning. <laughs> yes, yes. The teacher wasn't there, so the kids were running wild. <laughs> and... So then, check this fast forward, way fast forward, and I'm out here in L.A. doing uh, the recording for that song, That Thing You Do, for the Tom Hanks Oh, yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're doing many takes, and I come in, and there's Tom Hanks at the, uh, he's right at the mixing board, and he's acting in character like the manager. goes, nice job, Kenny, where's that beret? I'm like, <laughs> what, what are you The video, folks, the video. Yeah, yes. there's a, so in the ROCK in USA video, Yeah. I had to dress up like a beatnik. Yeah. J John wanted to create this retro vibe. Yeah. So I'm dressed up like a beatnik, and I'm shaking my head like that. So I ended up looking over at Don Wan's a producer, and he's laughing his head off at me. And <laughs> he pulls me and he says, Tom Hanks, the word is that Tom Hanks was inspired by that video we did with Mellencamp for ROC Can USA and wrote the script to um, That Thing You Do. Wow, I didn't do that. So, so I'm, I know this, and I know Tom Tom, and... Is the he is so cool to me? It's ridiculous. Wow. Like when I did Obama's <laughs> inauguration when the green woman goes, Kenny, I didn't know you were gonna be here. I'm like, well, I would have let you know, but I don't have your number. <laughs> hey Tom, I'm gonna be here. Right, exactly. And he goes, I love it. And he, apparently when he did sound check for his voice yeah. on the in, in the Lincoln Memorial. So everybody, this is gonna rock because Aronoff's here playing drums. Wow. That's the type of stuff he says. And so at the end, of the, the last Kennedy Center honors I did a couple years ago, we were honoring Sting, and one of the people that was honored at that Kennedy Center honors was Tom Hanks. So they did that thing you do. Yeah. So when we get up to the after party, there's Tom Hanks with Spielberg, and he's holding court, oh and Sting, and all these people, and and, uh, and Tom goes, Kenny, the same thing. He goes, dude. You were amazing. You know, I told my wife, I think that's Kenny playing down there, and if it is, this place is going to rock, <laughs> which it did. And yes. I I said, well, you know, dude, I almost jumped up on the drums. When I saw that they were doing that thing, you do almost grab that kid off the drum set, but actually I had given him lessons, and I didn't oh, want to, like, do that. Yeah. He says, you should have gotten up there, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I couldn't help myself. I asked him in front of everybody, is it really true that you got inspired by the ROC Kenny? Oh, he was absolutely Kenny. Now, maybe he was being nice and said, but that's what he said right in front of everybody. Well, I mean, it kind of makes you think about the theme and the time period. It kind of makes sense in a way. Now, there's a, I see a connection. Well, yeah, it just triggered something in his head. He yeah. went, oh, yeah, bands back then. And then, you know, and he's a big music freak. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know. And, his, and his wife sings. She reads, yeah. really sings. It's funny because, you know, when I see that video and that song, you're right, it was very, very, very commercial. Um, and I thought, it's interesting, because the album had other songs that didn't sound like that. And no. it was just like, when that, that's like the third single or fourth, I remember when it came yeah. out. And I was like, oh, and I, and I really liked it. It was very, I mean, the video did help the song. It was it like, did. very 60s, T, you know, Tammy's TNC show kind of yeah. thing. It was like, oh, okay, I get it. I totally get it. It really helped the song. So it was You're kinda... right, back then, that videos actually helped the song. I mean, the yeah. MTV embraced John. MTV, John was one of the first MTV, you know, yeah. uh, 
artist. We're going to talk, talk about that a little later because I have a thing yeah. called the MTV years. We're going to talk about that. But first, I, I kind of want to say, you know, the drummer is the backbone of the band, isn't it? It's the engine in a car. The, I always yeah. look at the lead singers, the, the car, and then the, the drummer is definitely the engine. Because everybody has to kind of, the drummer sets the tone, correct? Oh, absolutely. And, and the thing is, you know, when I was a kid, I was never uh, intimidated to play in front of people, but nervous because if the drummer messes the beat yeah. up or you make a big mistake, Everybody knows. I'll say yeah. Everybody. And, you know, if a guitar player plays the wrong chord, not so noticeable. Not so much. You can play it. You can play it off So the, bit, yeah. there's a lot of pressure on the drummer, and the drummer can elevate, and I know I can make people play better. You know, never worse, I hope. Cause it's, it's, <laughs> but I can always make people play better. I can I can maneuver yeah. the energy of a band with the way I play. We're going to show us a scene of something you did recently, not too long ago. Uh, Pink Houses, let's show that. All right. I mean, the Jack and Diane. No, Jack, sorry, Jack and Diane, the first one. You were playing this for somebody, and you were showing them how how the, the kind oh, of oh wow, how, this is a video of me showing this, people. This, this, this one here. Yeah. Awesome. So far, I'm doing a great job. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, in the middle of the song, that's a great yeah. drum thing. See, that's that saved my career. Oh really? Oh yeah. I'd been replaced on the first record I got in the band. I didn't know how to, oh. I didn't know my purpose, uh, what the purpose of a drummer is, which is ultimately to get somebody's song to, on the radio be number one. Oh. I never thought nobody, there was no handbook or rule book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this song was off the record until I programmed the drum beat and came up with that. I mean, now and it's a legendary, yeah. I mean, legendary song. Came a number one hit. So I just want to show a piece of that. It was showing you kind of, but now here's what's funny. Talk about, talk about the, the the Jack and Diane thing. I really believe the drum part really is, and the hand claps. They were the things that really stood out in the song and yeah. in the video. Well, um, like I said, we were just we didn't know how to arrange songs back then. We were just playing them, and we we came up. You know, John played this song. It sounded like a really quiet, kind of intimate song. So I played this simple little beat, cross stick on it. You know. Yeah. And it was just a cross stick, so it was really soft. But and then eventually I went to backbeat, but it wasn't John was smart enough to know this isn't cool enough. We're not doing anything that's cool. Mm. And so we didn't know what to do. And suddenly the Bee Gees were recording next door, uh, uh -huh. and we heard this weird drum machine. And it was a <laughs> Lin one. And and our engineer, co producer, uh, brought it in one day and I saw that I was like Get the hell <laughs> away. There's no right. way we're going to have a drum machine replace me. But, yes, we are. And yeah. so I grabbed it and I programmed it. The idea yeah. was to build the song, you know, bringing certain things in, bringing certain things out. I went back into the lounge and played pool all bummed out. Next thing you know, it's like, Aronoff, get in here. And it's like, we need a drum solo. I'm thinking, drum solo on a ballad? I'm yeah. Thinking, I was thinking Buddy Rich. Okay, you yes, know, Buddy yes, Rich big yes, band. Yeah. And Buddy would have probably said that song's a piece of shit, get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, there ain't no yeah, drum yeah, solo yeah. on that. The song right. ain't worth a drum. Right. <laughs> so, long story short, we spent uh, most of the day trying to get a drum sound cuz we had never did this big drum sound before. It was yeah. always drums were in a little vocal booth yeah. and you could control the sound. We still had to work with getting the mics in the right place, getting sound. And then I I slowly Measure by measure, built this drum part, which is I call it a drum melody. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a hook line. It's a a composition. That's what I call it. It's a composition. It's not just a solo, yeah. because everybody can air drum it. It's simple. Yeah, yeah, they melodic. can totally completely. Yeah, it's a hook line. So um, yeah, under a lot of stress and duress and uh, fear for losing my job, I came up with that. And then they wanted me to keep playing that groove. So I could put. Oh, it was. Uh, I say it in my book. It was. Um, uh, Mick Ronson, the guitar player, used oh, to yeah. play with a Bowie. He's yeah. the one that said, "You know, mate, John, you should put the the vocals, the choruses over that drum beat, at a cappella." And then yeah. we did. Song became number one. Yeah, still playing on the radio. Oh, make it hello. Shoot. Actually, the show Blackish, they named the twins Jack and Diane. I'm guessing that's the influence of that song. Wow. There are two little black kids named Jack and Diane on a on a hit TV show on ABC. I, wow. It's well, hilarious. I'm just saying that the song was so huge. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was number one. It was. I remember it played every. And back then, there was yeah. no social media or anything. It was. It was. And then MTV really hadn't. It just started that same kind yeah. of year yeah. as Jack Knight came out. So it wasn't like. I mean, the video did become this iconic thing, but there wasn't like this video channel that's been out for years. It was. It was all radio driven, concert driven. I mean, yeah, and record if sales. If, if you were number one on top one hundred, yeah, <laughs> you earned it. I mean, you earned and it. And you were on every radio station. It, in yeah. the world yes. or, or in the country and uh, you couldn't get away from it. I mean, now there's like 50 different yeah, charts. Yeah, you can yeah, be number yeah, one and yeah. sell five records. Yeah. This is, we're talking millions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's so true. But, you know, but here's the thing, and also I just remember back then, you know, because you mentioned the Bee Gees because we were coming out of the disco period. Yeah. We were just hitting the new wave period yeah. that the punk period was happening yeah. where you said some people were doing the drum machine that was becoming this big thing and there was backlash about that, of course. Okay. But like you said, you found a way to work it to your advantage, yeah, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Because I saw, I love the Bee Gees. I have no problem saying that the Bee Gees to me make great, great little songs. They All their did. songs they are great. Did. They did. I mean, they made some and great stuff. They could sing. They could sing. We made fun of them back then, <laughs> of but course, boy, of course. I respect them now. Yeah, of course, of course. It's kind yeah. of funny. Uh, were there any drummers at the time that you really just uh, just that you really admire? Because there's a lot of drummers out there. I mean, I mean, oh, yeah. you go to back Van Halen then? or this or anything. So back or back then, especially back then. Well, the big the drummer that really got my attention, well, obviously Ringo, Dave, yeah. and Charlie yes. Watts. But I thought, well, you know, I was listening to jazz drummers, so I thought, yes, you have a big jazz background, folks. Yeah, they, yes. yeah, they didn't have technique, you no. know. Until I, now, I realized, go ahead, try to play like Charlie <laughs> Watts and Ringo Starr. You can't do it, yeah, because you don't have the phrasing, the feel. But Mitch Mitchell grabbed me big time, oh, okay, because he was a jazz drummer, yeah, playing rock and roll. And yeah. I went, I can relate to that. Yeah, that's, that's 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 a good one. Good. Yep, that okay. was the guy. And then you know, you know Billy Cobb from the Mahavishnu Orchestra. You know John Bonham, oh, of yeah. course. John Bonham, yes. Keith Moon. You know Ginger Baker. I mean, yeah. And then you know nowadays there's so many drummers. A lot there's of so great many. drummers. Yeah, there's some yeah. great, some good ones out there. Okay, so we're gonna do a speed round. Now, what I'm gonna do is I have now, folks. These are just uh, this is just a smattering of people he's worked with, or because he, he's worked with so many people, it's amazing. And I can't I can go on for two hours, but I ask them. <laughs> these are ones that I kind of want to know a little bit about. So either a I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a word or something, and you're going to tell me either a one word or a phrase that comes up, or a short little story. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's do it. The first one is I tell you people that I really want to know about, of course, a little bit. Tommy Tony Iomi. Oh, badass, mellow, sweet, really sweet. It's like his personality is the opposite of what he sounds like. Yes. Really sweet, very nice. Wow, it was okay. amazing to play with him. Great guy. Very cool. Uh, I'll say this one for last. John Fogarty. John Fogarty, very serious, very sweetheart, very serious about his music and career and practices still three hours a day. Oh, yep. wow. Yep. Very, I'm a, a perfectionist. Big fan. One of the greatest songwriters America ever produced. I love I love CCR. I was a big fan yeah. of CCR. But yeah. then when he came back solo, I was like, ooh, this is just as good as that. It's yeah. some good stuff there, wasn't there? Yeah, he's, he's amazing. He's iconic. Yes. Melissa Etheridge. Love her. I love her. She's <laughs> a, <laughs> you, just smile, you just lit up when I said her name. Man, I can tell. She's, she knows it. Yeah. She's sweet. She's a kind person. One of the greatest female voices I've ever heard in my life. One of the greatest singers. Incredible acoustic guitar player. Great songwriter. Passionate, loving, giving. She's, she's, she's amazing. Hold up. Lady Gaga. I could not believe how talented she was. See, right? I, tell Great. me, I feel like she's a musician, isn't she? Oh my God, yeah. Forget I all did, the stuff, other stuff. Yeah. Right? Oh my God. She, when she did the rehearsal at Kennedy Center on us, first of all, very confident. She lifted the piano, turned it around, the electric piano. She, she, she didn't, like a lot of people, they, they face with their back to us and do it like right. they're going to be on stage. She wanted to look at us, rehearse with us, put the music out, started working out the chords. We were doing, we were honoring Sting, so we were doing, if I ever, if I ever lose my faith. Oh yeah, that's all you know, me. And sh she's rehearsing it, working out. So if I ever lose, lose wait, my let me think. Faith. If I ever lose, she's just working it there, and she says, "Hey, the music director, how many times can I do this?" She said, uh, <laughs> "As much as you want," because the people don't usually ask that. Yeah, sure. And they said, "Well, let's do eight times." And she working it and loving it. And she said, let me try this again. Really a true musician. That's what I figured. I, I mean, she, to me, I feel like all the artifice that comes on after that, just, that's just stuff. But she really can sing. She can play. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's what, she that's what I She killed it, man. That's what I thought. And, and they actually, she got better and better every take. Wow. Um, here's one that makes me just giggle a little bit. Heaven is a place on earth. 
Ooh, baby, <laughs> you know what that's worth. Yes. <laughs> when there's a place on earth. Yes. Belinda Carlisle. Belinda Carlisle. Number one hit. I mean, that'd be a huge hit for First her. number one hit I had outside of Melican. <laughs> oh, really? That's her first one outside of I came out here, got on first number one. I said, I can do this. I like this. <laughs> Thinking like next week I'll come out yeah, and have another one. Yeah, another one. Sure, Took well, a while, if yeah, I, yeah, yeah, you got not, some other ones, but not that easy. That's so funny. That was a cool song. I should, I should like this. I mean, it's, it's it's a great pop song. It really you is. You know, there's a funny story. I don't think I put it in the book, but like on the next record I did, she showed up like at five, and we we're in there rehearsing, getting sounds, and I'm sitting there, and she's in the vocal booth, and she's like, "Well, I gotta leave because I gotta see my TV, uh, you know, sitcom." sitcoms or something yeah. and blah 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 I went well I'll inspire you and I took off my pants oh my god and I was in my underwear playing how's this and she's going like this covered <laughs> yeah, up yeah, yeah. so I went oh yeah and I tried to get to her vocal booth but I couldn't get into it from that room apparently the way you get into the vocal booth was from the hallway so I go running out of the room to go and she takes off running she knows I'm coming <laughs> I tackled her Oh, that's so right funny. Right in the hallway and laid on top of her, like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I just, that's what I did back well, then. Well, back in the day, and well, they can't, they've documented, the Go-Go's really did have some wild times yeah, back then, Yeah, man, so I thought I was They were kind of punk. They were kind of punk She back then. was trying to change her ways. Yes, so, she was. You know. Yes, she was. So, uh, you know. Yes, I like that. Now, somebody who I just admire, he's a good actor, but also just vocally so good, Meatloaf. Oh, man. Theater, you know, Jim Steinman, emotion. Meatloaf. You got all that going on, right? Dude, this guy's all about theater. So drama, so just, excitement. So you have to play hard, bigger. Just to, to play, play the drums bigger because the songs are. Because he's bigger. You know, yeah, because the songs are bigger. <laughs> you know, Jim Steinman writes songs with ten thousand words in a title. You know, I would do anything but love. You know, he does. He does that. So I'm just saying, dude, you know that song? I was laughing. At. I said, no one's gonna play an <laughs> eight, nine minute song uh, on the radio. Then they added two more minutes to it. Yeah. A year later, I went to New York and added, we added that. <laughs> I'm like, who's okay? Pay me and let's have some dinner. We'll have some. Who's number one? I know. In 15 countries the same day, it eventually was number one in 22 countries. So I told everybody, if you want to know what a hit is, yeah. ask me. And if I say it's not, it's gonna be a hit. <laughs> I've, I've failed twice. Right. Another one. Sometimes love just saying enough. Oh yeah. Patty Smythe. Patty Smythe. Number song. one hit, and I was like. No one's gonna play that. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of Nirvana? This is now new. The Nirvana uh, Soundgarden yeah. Pearl Jam. Yeah. They don't care about this piece of number, shit song. Number one hit. Was number hit one hit because it's a great song. It's great. It's a great song. So, but anyway, Meatloaf was yeah. just dramatic. I love that yeah. we talk sports. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Oh man. He was, like I say, he's a good actor and everything. He does acting stuff. But I'm just saying, as a singer, and because him and him and John Stein, all the all the Bad Habit L albums were all just so big yeah. and bold, dramatic, and just, and dramatic. theater, theatrical. Yeah, so I figured you had to do that. Um, Blaze of Glory, another big hit, and this one was solo John Bon Jovi for that movie. Dude, that, well, first of all, John Bon Jovi and I, are, he's like, I love that guy. I would really do, and he used to call me Handsome Kenny. And if I go, like, <laughs> he go Handsome Kenny, I go. Who? What? <laughs> Me? <laughs> go, yeah, you know, like, I'm not, he's, oh, it's because I'm ugly, you feel bad. You know what I mean? This guy's a stud. Yeah, oh, yeah. Anyway, that was big, big record for what? both of us, because I was, I, John Mellencamp had decided to, to put the band away for a while, because he was burnt out. No disrespect to John at all, he was mm. burnt out. Yeah. Bon Jovi, the band needed a break, but yeah. John is a workaholic, and he could not, not, that's a great story in the book how you know yeah. he called me up and like, you know, hey, I'm gonna do two songs you wanna record. Oh he actually goes, Kenny? Yep. It's John. John Bon Jovi went, Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. Hey buddy, how you doing? Ken, I'm doing this thing. I'm writing some songs for a movie. Are you, are you in? I'm like, Yeah. I'll call you a couple of weeks, calls me back. Hey, it's four songs now. Then it's the whole album. Yeah. Then it's like, dude, I got good news and bad news. What's the good news? Is Jeff Beck's playing on their record? I'm like, oh, I know Jeff my Beck. God, I idol know. guitar players. Yes. What's the bad news? Jeff wants Terry Bazio, his drummer, to play on the oh record. I went, four letter words begin with an F, end with a K, and there's a U and a C in the middle. Yes. I was yeah. bombed out, and I'm pacing the floor, you know, going, God, this happened. Back then, that, that, that bug, I really wanted to be on. Yeah. I get a phone call from the co-producer. He goes, dude, what's up, Ken? What's up, man? So, listen, have your drums there at two, 9 a.m. on Tuesday. I went, uh, dude, 
you spoken to John lately? Yeah. Didn't he tell you that I'm not playing drums on it? He says, what? You're playing drums? He says, no, he's got Terry. Jeff Beck does what? Oh, listen, dude, no disrespect to Terry, great drummer, but you're playing the record. You're the right guy for the record. Jeff Beck ain't going to come in there and slug out 12 hours of recording. He comes in and overdubs his solo. How I funny. Went, well, I know that now, but back yeah. then I was a little still. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Why would he sit there and go right. for the 800th time to do the song? And that's what happened. I was on the record. The that's, whole album. That's so funny. Wow. Um, Alice Cooper. Again, Alice, I heard it's a great guy, too, I heard. Alice is the sweetest guy in the world. Right. Didn't see me record one song. He oh. came in, hung out, said hi, met me. Sweet guy, like, totally got his shit together. And then he left. Oh. And then I recorded for four days by myself. How funny but is that? But Paul McCartney came in and said hi and spoke with us for we're going to talk about that a little later because that's something that's a, a theme okay. in your life too. That's a theme in your life. Yeah. Um, Alanis Morissette. Oh man, I did eight songs for her. She wasn't there. The okay. day I did eight songs for her, I did thirteen songs. This was the changing of budgets. I saw it happening. Uh, you get one room. I come in and do thirteen songs as opposed to trying to get paid two and a half grand for that room, maybe three grand for that room. Yeah. For multiple days, I come in. You do it all in one day. Bam. Yeah. Finish. Two songs for Anastasia, one for Melissa Etheridge, one for... Anastasia, uh, I love Anastasia. Oh yeah, one for um, Johnny um, Resnick from the Goo Goo Dolls, yes, one for yes. Gwen Stefani, and eight for the last one. Wow. Set. And then I flew back, I flew in from New York, Philadelphia on tour with Melissa, uh, Michelle Branch, and I flew oh, back Branch, to yeah. New York to do The View. And I did 13 songs in one day. Never met her. Finally, last year I did Music Cares. Oh, and, you finally met her. And met her. Told her she knew who I was. Well, they all know who you are. Yeah. I'm sure at this point they know who you are. Uh, Bob Dylan. Well, Dylan and I are friends, but the the only time I spoke to him was the first day he walked and tapped me on the shoulder and said, and I jumped back and went, whoa, it's Dylan. Yes. He goes, shook my hand and goes, I can't eat Bob Dylan. Nice to meet you. That was it. Yeah, I love it. The rest he was quiet, so I went, I'm hyper. I yeah. start talking. To I, I love it. That's why I feel the energy. So but she, you, you know but that, with you know, him, I just knew. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look. I did four days of recording. Every day was a different group of guys. Yeah. But they, Jadon decided they wanted to keep me on everything. So that's what happened. It's great. Pay the bell. Loudest, most powerful voice from a female I've ever heard in my life, if not yeah. person. Yeah. Person. So powerful. Somebody I like, George Jones. Wow. I don't know the lyrics to the song, but it's one of them. I love it. I George Jones, the traditional. Yeah. Country music. This is real country. Not yeah. some of this hillbilly crap that they're trying to imitate Mellencamp. This right, guy, right, right. Yeah, it's just it's just we live in the eighties. This was real song I agree. Guy. And I to jump off of George do it. I got to do the last Highwayman record. I wish I love the Highwayman. Oh my god. They asked I me to go on tour. Think about it, kids. Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, Chris Christopherson, yeah. and Willie Nelson all in one band. I know. And these guys Damn, I, I didn't go on tour with them because I was with Mellencamp still. And, God, could you imagine? I mean, when I was making a record with them, there's only a few times I've kept my mouth shut. One was yeah. the Bob Dylan record and this Highway America. Yeah. Damn, what can you say when you listen to these four guys right. talking? Let them do their thing. Let them do their thing. Unbelievable. And I was, the wild thing, the title of Meatloaf, I was recording with the Highway Man record, like, uh, maybe it was 12 in the afternoon to 9 at night, and then... Nine at night till two in the morning, oh meatloaf. And then on the weekend, I flew to New York and did the Buddy Rich Big Band. Is that crazy? That's yeah, crazy. Those were the days, man. The days. I just, you know, for me, I just feel like I, I was in a, I came of age at a lucky time because there was the Highwaymen. Then a little later, there was Traveling Wilburys. Oh yeah. It's all these groups where people were coming together. The Firm. These groups were coming together. People from other bands that you love. Yeah, yeah. 
would come together yeah. and, put, and put out some amazing records, actually. I know. Well, that's because people took more time to make records, and there was budget, so it was money. Right. So you could experiment. Wait, talk about it. And also, I went beyond the lazy country did, too. You know, it was like the Lynn, Dolly Parton, yeah. Ty Wendt move, um, records, and people were coming together and making these amazing yeah. songs and records together. So that's a... But Hire Men's my favorite. I, I liked them very that's much. That's wild. Um, and this, this thing on the same tip of that, um, Garth Brooks, one of my favorite people in the world. He is... You've met him? I've met him, and I went to one of his concerts, private He's, concerts. Super nice guy. guy. Super, super nice, nice guy. guy. And he knows how to play. He knows yes, how to write songs. He does. He really does. I'm a big fan of his. Um, Cheryl Crow. Love her. She's like she'd be well, a really musician too. too much in... No, it's fine. But she's if a musician. If I was single, she... I would go after her. <laughs> she's hot. She is she hot. hot. She's hot. I and tell her every and time. I said, I tell her, but you know, I love my wife. I'm not going to leave my wife to go with her. But. No. If I was single, I'd go after her. Yeah. This time, I wouldn't fail. <laughs> I always tell her I love her. She That's laughs. Go, sure. go on. I'm sure. That's great. Um, super talented. Too. No, I was going to say, yeah, she's a musician. She's super talented. I almost put that in my book that I love her, but I just thought that would be a little bit weird. <laughs> but not on this show. Not on this show. Not this show. after Buzz. Not after Buzz. That's right. Stevie Wonder. Oh my God! You've had that. You've been so blessed. That's not even the word. You've been so just everything. You've worked with all these people. Mary wants to be a superwoman. <laughs> da, 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 da. I mean, that was the first uh, music of my mind. The first of four genius records. Remember, music of my mind, talking book yep. was a superstition. Yes. And then, um, uh, then it was also then it was intervi uh, inter intervision. Uh, what's the one that had creeping? Uh, inter intervisions, talking book. No, um, and then it was a, a first fully first finale, yeah. and then of course songs like "Your Life." Yeah. Do you know that? Do you know that that song called "Creeping"? Yeah. In my dreams, I can't sing, folks. But that, that song is so deep. Yeah. Well, when I, you know, the Beatles, Hendrix, of course, you know yeah. Zeppelin, but when Steve, Stevie had his own planet, man, that oh, and the talent's amazing. Every night I'd listen to that stuff. Wow. Dance would. In the in our barn, we yeah. practice, maybe a couple of hits on a doobie, drink some beer and listen hey, to Stevie, and then to play with him. Yeah. Oh, the inauguration okay. with Obama. I got to yes. play with him. I got to play with him at, for the Beatles tribute. You yes. know, oh, Stevie Wonder. Wow. Yeah. So the last one we talked about before I get to John Mellencamp is. Um, because I loved, I loved '70s ZZ Top. I mean, I did like '80s ZZ Top. They were great, but '70s it was much harder. But you played with Billy Gibbons. Yeah, we'll be and, playing with him December 16th. Okay, and, and I just played with him. I just, I just, I love, I love that. Yeah, he's good. He's good. They're, they're good. Let's see, cool. Hello. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he's the coolest dude. Smart. Yeah, plays amazing guitar. I just. Billy's great. Yeah. I'm lucky, man. I get, I'm playing with every person's amazing. God. Okay, so I'm going to have um, Zach put up a clip, the next clip I want to show. Because we're talking about Melanie Cam. This is you at Farm A, which I remember wow. over 30 years ago. Did I have and hair that's 85. You're going to see yourself in there. If we're going to show a clip where you oh. see part of you, just go ahead and play that. When I was younger, oh, wow. Here you go. Look at me. You're coming up short. Like no no. Like <laughs> 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 You'll see yourself in a second. Paint the drums back there. Let me hear you sing it one time. That's John. That's the John I know. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so John used to make the audience sing. I love it. Look at that. That's awesome. So that's when I saw a little piece as you see you see you playing your drums. The camera went right on to it and came out. So that's when I saw that little bit. That's from Farm Aid. Which one was that? Was that Indy? I'm not sure. But I can't remember. Yeah, it was Indiana. I think it was Indiana, I think so. Yeah, because that's hometown. Yeah. Farm Aid was something that was started. I was after Live Aid. It was Live Aid that did something, yeah. and it was also We Are the World. But Farm Aid was for the farmers in America. And that was a great, uh, great uh, cause that you guys that did. It was killer, man. Yeah, you guys did. So, I mean, so, because you and John, like I said, oh, this long association. What is one thing about John Mellencamp that we just don't really know about? Like, just not, it's not written about him that, we, that you could tell me a little something. Huh, that's interesting. I mean, we all know he works hard. Yes. Very, very hard worker. Yes. He made his career. So, oh, here's one. Super ridiculous fast runner. Oh. Dude, we played okay. sports. We had the MFL, Mellencamp Football yeah. League. Man, that's right. I, I remember I, that. I, I like, called yeah. it the mandatory football league. <laughs> yeah. But this dude, I'm telling you, dude, the fastest guy I've ever. He's so wow. fast. Wow. He could run. Run. Oh, my God. He's, look at in my book. I talk about how he seventy five miles an hour drives by us in the in, in we're in Indiana, but in yeah. the cornfields we're all going to meet in town, to have some fun, and it's dark, and he goes by with a, no helmet on and an Airedale, big, 
huge dog jumps out. We didn't know it. All of a sudden, we see his bike. His bike goes by us, and we see sparks, and then all of a sudden, kind of an explosion. He, a dog came out, hit his bike, knocked him down. He got on top of the bike while it was spinning down the highway, and then it hit the tree where the explosion was, and he pushed himself off <laughs> just as it hit the tree. Oh that's a super athlete. That, that's, that, that's, that's a stunt not, person. Nine lives of John yes. Mellencamp. Now, uh, also, because I get to have, doing these, I get to interview people, I get to have full circle moments every once in a while. It doesn't happen very often. But yeah. somebody that I really, they influenced me so much, I get to interview them. It's happened to me several times. Um, and you have one basically with the Beatles, and yeah. then later playing with Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr for um, the special that the you guys CBS did. CBS special, yes. So talk a little about that, about the, just because you were, you admire because Ringo obviously drummer, Paul yeah. McCartney excellent writer and well, everything. So I mean, my story in the book is, yes. is is bookended by you know seeing the Beatles when I was eleven on the Ed Sullivan Show and my mom yelling at us to come in because there's nothing to watch on TV. Yes, we had a black and white TV with like some. Rabbit ears. And oh, stuff. remember those? Remember the tinfoil? Yes. Try to get a little bit more reception, but... A little bit. Yeah. 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 Move it this way, John. Yes, yeah. exactly. So my parents... Yeah. My mom goes, <laughs> you got to come in this, the family room. And I'm like, oh, shit, what do I do? I'm in trouble. The Beatles were on TV, and I'm like, going like, uh, Mom, I want to be in the Beatles. Call them up. I want to be in the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> Silence. And then I go, I, I want that... I want to play drums. I like the drums. The energy, you know? Silence. She wouldn't say anything. And finally, I go, Well, I'm going to grow my hair. I want girls going crazy for me. I want to rock. I want to be in the Beatles. She didn't call them up. She didn't have the number. Well, <laughs> so obviously, started, they're from England, so it kind so of was I later. started my first band a week later. And wow. um, I had a, all I could afford was a snare drum, a cymbal, a stood, and I played. But 50 years later, 50 years wow. later, I'm still kicking ass. Yes. And I get asked to be on that show that honors the Beatles for that TV show that happened 50 years wow. ago. Isn't I mean, that amazing? Isn't, I mean, you that's can't, I mean, amazing. Life doesn't even get, you can't even script that you can't. shit, so to speak. So my right. book talks about dreams come true, but yes. my, the point I make out of that, dreams come true, but not by accident. I made it happen. Yeah, you made it happen. I made it happen. Yeah, I mean, you can't just, no. it's not by accident. The guy that, you know, doesn't make it happen, has that wish. I mean, it's possible I never would have played with the Beatles, but not only did I get to play and honor them and play with Paul and Ringo, but I played a whole uh, thing for with Ringo honoring him yeah. a couple weeks before. Yeah. And then I did the Grammys yeah, the, the Grammys. night before the, the, that Beatles thing yeah, with yeah. Ringo. Yeah. I mean... Is Ringo an underrated drummer? Yeah. I yeah Ringo, so, what, yeah. what makes Ringo amazing is his feel. Feel is ridiculous. His ideas, his parts. I used to like not praise him because I was into Buddy Rich, Elvin oh, Jones, yeah. Joe Jones, the the, the jazz yeah, drums, yeah. Louis Belson. But when I had to write three articles about him for Modern Drummer, uh, and I stripped them down, I went, "Holy shit!" Yeah. This guy came up with the coolest parts, and his feel was great. His feel is un there's nothing. Because like the early it. records, especially, yeah. I'm thinking, were really early Beatles there was records. A song like goes, they typically. If this song is in my life, uh, 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 yeah. you would do play the hi hat mm, like that. Mm, and uh, 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 uh. Yeah. he went. What is that beat? I mean, and then, I mean, just that he came up with that was like, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Yeah, it's just different. Yeah, I very imagine. and a great feel. Yeah, I, I, when, I, when I read the story, but I was like, he just—you had a full circle. It was like it's just—it's like people just—it just—it's amazing, isn't it? You just go, wow! If you stay in something long enough and keep pushing forward, well, I mean, you yeah. know what I mean? I well, mean, I talk about the book taught me yeah. about seven ways I believe people can be successful, stay successful. The same seven ways that made me successful and have kept me successful yeah. for thirty-five years. Yeah. That's what I learned from the book. Yeah. Any thoughts? Um, just people, a couple of you mentioned briefly. Thoughts on David Bowie? Maybe we lost him earlier this year. Well, I, I wish I'd played with him, man. You I, didn't play with him, I know. Yeah, like, you played I, everybody else. I, I opened up for Well, the. Yeah, Fogarty opened up for him, but I never yeah. played with him. Yeah. That would um, be cool. Prince. <sighs> wish I'd played with him. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, I can like, imagine. I mean, talk about He's a Damn. musician, all like a musician. I know, also. he was tough to work with, but I yeah. would have put up with it, man. I would love to play with yes. him. Yes. Oh, man, I could relate to his thing. Oh, really? Oh, how yeah. funny. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Because I, I, I think about him to say, talk I, about music, I think about when Doves Cry. When that song was out, oh, yeah. no bass in the song, <laughs> and, that, and that drum beat. The drum beat drives the, it drives it. The sounds of those, the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, I did record a, a Prince song once. Oh, which one? When You Were Mine. When You Were Mine. Oh, yeah. With Mitch Ryder. Mitch Ryder did a version. He did a version. Oh, he funny. did, because when Mellencamp decided, I'm not going to make records anymore, yeah. except for at home. Okay. He said, I'm not going to open up for anybody anymore. That's what I love about John, man. <laughs> he had balls like that. He went, I'm not opening up for anybody anymore. I'm going to be the headliner. Yes. And I'm making records at home. So we got this old sh piece of crap yes. shack. We call it the shack. <laughs> yes. His sister had, she said, he said, I'll take over the house. I'll put drywall up. I'll fix it up. I'll You're good. Up. You're that good. was my cell phone. Yeah, good. I'll pick it up. I'll fix up the house if we can have it. Yeah. I'll fix it up. You don't give a house to a band for six months. <laughs> Dude, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, we put drywall up, but we also put, punched holes with drywall. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes, I'm and sure. And peed on the walls probably. Anyway. Yes. We, we brought a mobile unit up from Miami and, and recorded Mitch Ryder. And once we did that, we recorded the uh -huh record in there. Okay. Dude, there was like cows, sheep, goats, <laughs> chickens outside in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Dude, it was scary. And uh, Southern Indiana, and so yeah, we recorded a Mitch Ryder record and we did When oh. You Were Mine. It's like it's drums. I love drums. I took some drums in high school. I thought I wasn't one of the greatest. I was more a piano yeah. person. I did try it. Um, but I admire, but I still, I, when I hear songs or groups and things, like, I really enjoy, I really enjoy uh, his name was Tony Thompson. He was oh, a yeah. chic. Who's a friend of mine? Who did, who did, of course, Power Station. I've been yeah. about groups coming together. When it was, you know, Robert Palmer yeah. and Duran Duran, half Duran Duran, they all came together and they did Bang a Gong and all those remakes and things. Um, great drummer. I mean, just, I hear I hear him go, some of these songs, the drums really do inform the song. They really do oh, yeah. stand out. Oh, yeah. Everybody thinks singer, guitarist, bass. Those are good too, but drums really do. Well, the drums are the most, aside from the vocals, the drums are the most passionate, emotional sounding yeah. you know, instrument. So, and the drummer can affect the band big time. I do it all the time. I go, I say to myself, watch this. And start playing harder or get more on top of the beat. Yep. I can make the, the guitar player play differently. Well, and how do you, how do you, and singers sing differently. How do you feel about like all the speed metal bands or people like Metallica where they're back there, like Lars, they're, they're back there playing so all the time so hard? How do you think about those? Oh, that's cool. I mean, they, they, you know, that's a, just a different thing. It's a different language. It's, like, yeah. I'm not... Uh, the, there's, only, there's very little I don't like. What I don't like is when people... I guess I just don't. I don't like music when it sucks. I mean, there's some music out there that sucks. <laughs> it's almost true. like you know that. Remember yeah. that old thing, the emperor that had no clothes, yes. but everyone said yes. he did, so he thought he did. <laughs> yes. Well, there's music out there like that. That's very true. Yeah, it's yes. just it's sucks. It's bullshit. <laughs> and you know, people going like, That's genius. I'm like, really? Let's see. There's no melody. I can't even sing a melody. Yes. The beat is so old and borrowed. <laughs> uh, let's see what lyrics. Hmm. That's like about grade four. Yes. So what is there to like about this shit? Right. Oh, you got some hip clothes? To me, you know what? Clothes, they are they add to the music, but that's not yeah. the whole thing. I mean, it's just, I it, I had this conversation with a famous actor, uh, Warren Beatty. Oh, yeah, Warren. And, uh, and I know we sound like the old dudes, but yeah. mediocrity has become acceptable. Mm -hmm. Because people, see, what happened was with music... And it's with the art too, with music. It, when there was, with the record labels were making tons and tons of money. Mm -hmm. Like the Celine Dion, two Celine Dion records sold 40 million yeah, dollars on. Right. And if record labels making, let's say, 82 cents on the dollar, that's a lot of dollars. They're rich. They're rich. Yeah, they're rich. Yeah. So they can take that money and reinvest in bands. Mm -hmm. They might sign 150 bands. Right. A guy like Mellencamp, they signed them to a, a, a lot of records, but they invested. To get a record to play it on the radio could cost half 
you know, could cost a half a million yeah, dollars, well, yeah, two million easily. dollars yeah, yeah. to get it get it marketed out there, another million to get it, the press out there, to get the band on the road. Mm -hmm. But the record label went, no, we'll invest to make the record, to make it. We might be in the studio for eight months. Yeah, back then, yeah. And the re labels didn't mind because they wanted quality. Mm -hmm. It costs money, though. The record companies are not making money anymore because nobody's buying CDs. If no. you don't buy CDs, mm -hmm. then the pro there's no money being made. You can't reinvest in band. My point is, we threw away so much music. Yeah. We reinvented. We wrote yeah. and then threw it away and started again. Mm -hmm. It's that whole ten thousand hours. If you put yeah. in ten, twenty, thirty thousand hours, you're gonna come. You're gonna get better, mm -hmm. and that's how our careers are made. That's true. But when you're sitting here with like, whoa, my dad gave me five thousand, and this guy's dad gave me five thousand, this guy gave me, we got fifteen thousand dollars to make a record, mix it, and now how are we gonna market it? Well, my uncle said that, you know, he knows somebody down the street. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, right. You know what I'm right. saying? It's mm -hmm. it's impossible. It so then people are like. Okay, we only got fifteen thousand. We don't. Have we can't take a chance. We better copy. What's the most popular song on the yes. radio? Let's just copy that. You see what yes, I mean? Yes, I so do. So then, yes. that's what. brought it's not the people's fault. It's no. just what's happened. Yeah. It's just mediocre. And I'm sorry, man. When I was growing up. You know, all of a sudden, man. Did you hear there's this new band called The Who? Right. What? I've never heard anything like that. Oh, dude, there's another band next week called Hendrix. I've never heard anything like this. What? Oh, dude, the stupidest name you've ever heard is a band called Cream well, yeah, in Cream. the White Room. <laughs> That's completely different, let alone the Beatles. Yes. And then you got, who's this guy, Bob Dylan? Sounds like some folk guy. <laughs> right. And then it just went up. Oh, well, Tessie, you don't James, think James Brown. Yeah, James Brown. He created his own planet. He sure did. Are he sure you did. kidding me? He sure did. These people were... Yes. I iconically different. I could talk to you for the rest of my life. That's good, man. We got time. No, no we don't. We got we got to wrap it up. All right. Well, it's going again. It's don't going you again. dare start talking about politics. <laughs> I didn't. So we stopped it. We're not gonna do that. We're not doing that at all. But thank you so much for being on the show. You are Dude, you are the bomb. Thank you. You're so all good. Right. Well, guess what? I'm gonna stick around and be around. You'll be interviewing me 20 years from now because it's gonna be more sex, yes, more <laughs> drums, and rock and roll. And that's the book, you guys. Uh, you can get it anywhere where books are sold. You can go online, Amazon, everything. Where can they find you on social media? Okay, Twitter is Aronoff Official, which yep. you can get me right now, or uh, Instagram is Kenny Aronoff, or my website, www.kennyaronoff.com. Facebook is just go to my name. I got a fan page yep. and a personal page. Personal page I tapped out five years ago. Or, 15 yeah, years ago, yeah. whatever. You have a good uh, good website. It's very easy to navigate. It's actually nice to look at. I was on there oh, last night. I got a new one coming out. Yeah, I guess so good. So you can follow them there. And of course, you can follow us here on at After Buzz TV on iTunes, YouTube. Um, you can find all these shows. This show will be on there. Everybody's also following me on my Twitter handle, James Lodd Jr. And everywhere else, I'm James Lodd Jr. too. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Book Soup today down 7 o'clock <laughs> on Sunset. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. I, I was like, good The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.